We begin our player-by-player look at the keys to the Islanders' season with Casey Sezikis. He has a pivotal season ahead for him, and what he does will be important to the Islanders. Plus, the Islanders end rookie camp. We'll talk about the player that stood out the most. We've got that and a lot more on today's Locked On Islanders podcast. Your Locked On Islanders, your daily podcast on the New York Islanders. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And welcome everybody to the Wednesday edition of the Locked On Islanders podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I want to thank everybody who makes Locked On Islanders your first listen every day. Don't forget to subscribe on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts so you can get new episodes as soon as they drop. And you can also find us now on SiriusXM on the SXM app. Just do a search for Locked On Islanders. Today's episode is brought to you by Jace Medical. Empower yourself when you purchase a Jace case, providing you with a personal supply of five antibiotics that treat 50-plus infections Get yours today at jacemedical.com. That's J-A-S-E medical.com. Lots to discuss on today's show. But first, if there's something Islanders related on your mind, if you have a question, a comment, maybe a topic you'd like us to discuss on today's show, feel free to email us at lockedonislanders at gmail.com. And if you leave your first name and where you're from, we are happy to mention you on the show when we discuss whatever it is that's on your mind. You could also follow the show on Twitter at Locked On Isles, and you could follow me, Gil Martin, on Twitter at Ice Wars NYR VSNYI. We will keep you up to date on all things Islanders from training camp to the preseason all through the regular season, so make sure you join us for that. And stay on top of the team that you love, all things New York Islanders. All right, lots to discuss today. And we're going to start by doing a player-by-player look at the Islanders. One player per day throughout training camp in the preseason. And break down sort of maybe the most important thing for them coming up this year. And we're going to start with Casey Sezikis. To me... Sezikis is in an interesting situation right now. And, you know, I always liked Zeke. He is a quintessential fourth line center. He is good on faceoffs. He will hustle all the time. He can be physical. He's very good on the four check. Not going to score a lot of points necessarily, but for a fourth line guy, Uh, You know, six goals, 21 points, not bad, all things considered, an even plus minus. And, you know, he's going to do a lot of other things. He can play wing in a pinch. And he certainly has the ability to be, you know, an important part of this team with face-offs and penalty kills and the like. The other thing you got to know about Sezikis, you know, his salary Two and a half million dollars. He has three years left on his current contract after this year. Here's the thing. The identity line, which has been the Islanders' fourth line for more than a decade, with the exception of the couple of years Matt Martin was in Toronto. Uh, you know, this is this is probably their last season together. Matt Martin, 34, Cal Clutterbuck. 35, both of them in the last year of their contract. What that means is that barring any surprising moves by Lou Lamorello during this upcoming season or off season where he would sign either one of those older players to an extension, this is the last year that the identity line is together. And while clearly these three players have great chemistry, you know, this is realistically the last go round for the three of them as a unit. And that even assumes that all three of them stay healthy for long enough this year to stay together and play well enough to stay together. What Sezikis needs to do this year from a 
personal standpoint is to establish his role so that next year when the identity line, when his two line mates are most likely not back with the team, and maybe you've got guys like Julian Gauthier or Hudson Fashing or Carson Kuhlman or, or you know, let, let's even talk about some of the younger players down on, you know, maybe it's a Simon Holmstrom. Maybe it's an Otto Koivula or an Arno Durando stepping in to the fourth line in 2024, 2025. <coughs> it is up to Casey Sezikis this season to show the Islanders that whoever else is going to be on the fourth line next year, he should be the center of that line. And, you know, it's also this. With Zach Parise not starting the season with the Islanders, the penalty-killing role of a guy like Casey Zizekas and, yeah, uh, Cal Clutterbuck and a few other key players, but that penalty-killing role is going to become even more important as is keeping guys like Clutterbuck and Sezikis and possibly Bo Horvat if he takes some turns on the PK and JG Pajot, keeping those guys healthy so they can be out there and kill penalties consistently. So we have to see how this all plays out, but it's important that Sezikis ends up showing that, you know, with all the time left on his contract and it's three more years, <coughs> he'll be 36 by the time his contract is up. And look, when you play a physical style, like all three members of the identity line play, you wear down a little bit faster because you're constantly hitting and being hit and digging for pucks in the corners. And it takes a physical toll. So hopefully, hopefully, Sezikis has that good season, is big on the PK, keeps winning faceoffs, keeps on being a part of a line that essentially sets the tone for this team. And let's not kid ourselves. It is important that that identity line set the tone. He's got to prove he belongs on this team in the right spot on that fourth line, or maybe even if he really plays well, a step up to the third line by his play this year. And look, let's face another fact. J.G. Pajot, who right now is the third line center, has been mentioned in a lot of trade rumors. Is there a possibility Casey Sezikis could step up and move up to third line center if <coughs> Pajot is traded? Or do you move, uh, you know, now you have five centers. If one is traded, do you just slot, you know, uh, Matthew Barzal back into the center position and keep Sezikis at fourth? How well he plays may very well go away to determining that. And then, of course, do you also go with one of the younger players uh, down on the farm? You know, Iskakov can play either center or wing. Uh, maybe you go with Iskakov if, if a trade is made. So, again, knowing that Casey Sezikis is playing well gives you more flexibility if any of the centers are traded. We'll see, but it's a critical season right now for Casey Zizekas because since it is most likely the last year that the identity line is together, Zizekas needs to prove to the Islanders brass that there is life for him after the identity line. All right, we have got more to get to on today's show. We're going to answer one of your email questions plus We'll talk about the rookie who stood out most in rookie camp now that rookie camp is fully over. We have that plus our Islanders birthday of the day, a former number one pick of the Islanders whose career was cut short by injury. J. 
just when he seemed to be rounding into form. All that and more still to come on today's Locked On Islanders podcast. Today's episode is brought to you by Jace Medical. Everyone should be empowered to care for themselves and their loved ones during the unexpected. That's why Jace Medical offers the Jace case. The Jace case provides five life-saving antibiotics for emergency use and gives you a peace of mind so that you're not just hoping that you have access to medication in an emergency. Jace Medical makes sure that you have the medication in hand. Jace Medical is simple. They handle everything from the online evaluation to licensed pharmacy medication delivery and ongoing consultation and care. Don't get caught unprepared. Save more than $360 by getting these life-saving antibiotics with Jace Medical, plus an additional $20 off by using code Locked On at checkout at jacemedical.com. That's J-A-S-E medical.com, promo code Locked On. So, rookie camp ended Tuesday, done. And I think, you know, a lot of players had a big chance of making an impression, but the one player who really stood out the most, in my opinion, has got to be Isaiah George. And there's a lot of factors involved in the way George has played. And look, he's now going to be part of the big camp, which certainly is important for the New York Islanders. But George you know, really looking very, very good. And, you know, to me, it's important to see George. He's only 19 years old. And here is what Rick Kowalski had to say about Isaiah George. He is, of course, the coach of the Bridgeport Islanders. If you were going to teach a kid the proper posture in skating, He's probably not too far off. He's always centered. He doesn't overextend. His mobility and his feet make him really tough to get by one-on-one. Now, George is going to play for the London Knights of the OHL, the Junior League. He's Because he's 19, he either has to play in the NHL or in juniors. He is not eligible to play for Bridgeport this year. But, That means really that the most he can do is play nine games with the Islanders. If he plays 10, he's got to stay with the Islanders all year. And I don't think that that's going to be something that this team is really ready to do. So overall, you know, George just looking very good. And another thing that Kowalski had to say about him his mobility, his his stick, he's strong, he's composed with the puck, and he makes a good first pass. All very positive things to have in a young defenseman. And then again, he adds this, which typical of the Islanders brass. I think sometimes it's better for a young player to go back and play with their peers as opposed to rushing it and having them play in a man's league. His mobility, like I said, all the assets he has, they certainly fit in to what we think would be an effective player at the American League level. So Isaiah George, not eligible for Bridgeport, but probably close to ready to play in the AHL. He'll have one more year of juniors, and I expect him fully to be with Bridgeport next year with a chance to fight for a roster spot when that happens. But clearly, I think, you know, Tristan Lennox looked good. The goaltender, he had some some good moments. Uh, some of the other defensemen uh, on this roster had their moments. But to me, Isaiah George, who just signed a contract, his entry-level deal, he looked the best. We have uh, an email that also uh, deals with a young prospect this one is from Chris. He did not say where he was from. But Chris writes, hey, Gil, love the show. Do you think Ruslan Iskakov will get a legitimate chance this year considering the Isles could use some offensive help? I think the kid is electric on the ice and very talented. Playmaking abilities with a nice shot. Outside of his size and veteran presence, what else could hold him back? How soon do you think we see him on the island? 
Chris, first of all, thank you for the kind words and for the email. Don't forget, LockedOnIslanders at gmail.com if you want to ask a question. And look, Chris, I think size is the biggest thing that is holding him back. That and the fact that Lou Lamorello and Lane Lambert tend to prefer to have their veterans in the lineup rather than their young players. I think you're right that Iskakov, his skill set fits what the Islanders need to improve this team. You want this team to get younger, faster, and more skilled. Iskakov checks those boxes. And the big question with Iskakov is, is he ready to take the physical pounding of an 82 game regular season when he's, you know, five, eight, and that may be generous and 165 pounds. And that may also be generous. Uh, you know, can you imagine him getting checked by, uh, you know, a, a six foot four, 210, 15 pound player or battling in front of the net with a guy like Zidane Chara or, or, uh, even a Scott Mayfield. It won't be easy. And what we saw from Ishkakov last year, he got off to a really good start and then slowed down, let's say, after the first six weeks or so of the season. And a lot of people speculate that that's because the physicality of the AHL kind of caught up with him. He needs to show in camp that he can take hits, be physical, battle for position, and the other thing that all Islander players need to show to make this team. Ishkakov needs to show that he'll back check and that he knows what to do without the puck, picking up his defensive assignment, being in the right position. If he doesn't do that, we've seen how young players who can't do that do not last on this team. They may get called up for a game or two, then they get benched uh, when they make a mistake or two. We saw that, uh, you know, last year with William Dufour in the only game he played in the NHL. I think barring a very, very strong preseason in training camp, Iskakov starts the season in the AHL. But if the Islanders are slumping and looking for offense or when injuries hit, if he has a strong camp, Ishkakov is probably one of the first players to be called up. And I think at some point this season, we will see him uh, in a New York Islanders jersey. And it'll be up to him to prove that he is ready for prime time and that, you know, he can be the answer for the New York Islanders and earn a permanent spot. Look, we saw Hudson Fashing do this last year. He was called up when injuries hit and he never came out of the lineup. So realistically speaking, it will be up to Iskakov to prove that he deserves a spot and does not deserve to leave the lineup. So Chris, again, thank you for the email. Great question. I know a lot of people are big Iskakov fans and let's see if the young Russian can get it done. This is the last year of his contract. And I wouldn't be surprised if he heads to the KHL or, uh, you know, as a free agent, tries to leave next year and sign elsewhere if he doesn't feel he has a legitimate chance to make the New York Islanders and play in the NHL this coming season. So going to be interesting. We'll keep an eye on Iskakov. A lot of skill, not a lot of size. If he can prove he can play despite the lack of size, He's got a shot, and I am rooting for the kid. I hope we see it. We've got more to get to on today's show. Some quotes as the Islanders veterans prepare for training camp, plus our Islanders birthday of the day. All that and a lot more still to come on today's Locked On Islanders podcast. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook. Snap into action this NFL season with FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook right now. New customers get $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. That's $200 in bonus bets, whether your first bet wins or loses. If you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there's no better time to get in on the action. And the app is so easy to use. There's a wide range of betting options like point spreads, player props, over-unders, 
and a lot more. And it's not just the NFL. You could use your knowledge of the Islanders. Futures already out there for the Isles. You can use that and bet on FanDuel as well. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and kick off the NFL season. FanDuel, official partner of the National Football League. So training camp is going to start today. Uh, Islanders players will be getting their physicals today. And then they will be out on the ice starting on Thursday. And, you know, a lot of players just ready for the start of the season. Here's what Bo Horvat had to say. I think everybody's excited. We really have a lot of good pieces here and a lot of talent. I think it's a tight-knit group here, and everybody knows what to expect from each other. So I'm excited about this year. Matthew Barzal added, I'm confident in this group. I love where we're at with the deals we got this summer, getting Mayfield and Engvall done. We've added some good size, but the core, it's in, and now we've got to make it happen. Lane Lambert kind of joking around that uh, he feels very good about his goaltenders when Varlamov, uh, Simeon Varlamov signing a four-year extension and certainly the extension signed by Ilya Sorokin, the starter. He just laughed it off and said, I sleep well. And uh, that certainly is a good thing. And again, he even though this roster isn't all that different this year, You hear a lot of these players saying, well, we look at it differently than we did a year ago. And Lane Lambert adding that as well. He said, anytime you can add competition as well as internal competition from within, I think it's a great thing. We've added some guys that have uh, NHL games. Some guys have over 100. So that just adds to the competition. And I think Bo Horvat more or less summed it up. I'm sick of the summer training and all that. I want to get going. Well, Bo, I could tell you right now, Islanders fans want to get going as well. It's really sort of time for this team to, to just get out there and, and, and hit the ice. And, oh, yeah, it, it, it's just a, a, a great time to have this happen. I am ready. You you just feel that chill in the air and, you know, showtime. Let's, let's bring on some hockey and, and, and get to the point where uh, we're going to see some exhibition games in what about a week, not even. So I am also looking forward to that. In fact, less than a week, first preseason game, September 26th, Islanders, at Madison Square Garden to face the Rangers. That's a 7 o'clock Eastern time start. And yeah, it's going to be televised on MSG. And I can't wait. I mean, we're literally talking uh, about, you know, next Tuesday. So bring it. Islanders, Rangers just around the corner. And just a lot to look forward to. Time now for our Islanders birthday of the day. We're a day late with this one. I mentioned a lot of important Islanders related birthdays this week. Well, yesterday, uh, Tuesday was the 42nd birthday of former Islanders goalie, Rick DiPietro. DP, the native of Lewiston, Maine, first overall pick in the 2000 NHL entry draft, not just first round. But number one overall, spent a year at Boston University and then joined the Islanders in 2000, 2001, signed that now infamous 15-year contract that made him an Islander for life. And then, you know, we saw a lot of us, him get injured during the skills competition at the All-Star game where he was mic'd up and had a camera on his mask. And all of a sudden, you hear him say, ouch, you know, that 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 hurt, something popped, you know, whatever it is. And, and he just absolutely had his career disrupted by injury after that. You look back at 2006, 2007, 2008, uh, you know, 63, 62, and 63 games played 
in 05, 06, 06, 07, 07, 08, and then never played more than 26 games in a season after that, and only played more than eight games in a season once, and that was in 2010, 2011. DiPietro, when he got hurt, was well on his way to becoming a very, very good NHL goaltender, and yet, you know, never got there. A lot of fans upset when he got hurt and uh, blamed him for the contract. I think the Islanders, because of the injury settlement, will probably be paying him until he's like 90. And I know I'm exaggerating, but uh, he he really, you know, who if, if somebody offered you that contract, would you turn it down? I, I don't think I would. Uh, so Rick DiPietro, a good guy. Uh, and a fine goaltender, and now a broadcaster on uh, radio. Uh, he, you know, really is one of the big what-ifs in Islanders history. Played in 319 NHL games, all of them with the Islanders. Had a 2.87 career goals against average, a 902 save percentage. One of his better games with the Islanders, how about December 16th, 2006, at the Old Barn, the Nassau Veterans Memorial Coliseum. The Atlanta Thrashers are the visitors. Johan Hedberg in goal for the Thrashers. Rick DiPietro in goal for the Islanders. And DP getting it done with a 37-save shutout in this game. Islanders get goals from six different players and end up with a 6-0 victory. Two-point games for Sean Bates, Andy Hilbert, Radek Martinek, Miro Shatan, Mike Sillinger as the Islanders really spread out the scoring, but DP the story, 37 saves. Islanders outshot 37 to 32, but win it going away six to nothing. Rick DiPietro, a good guy. And uh, again, one of the great what ifs in Islanders history. He is our Islanders birthday of the day. I want to thank everyone once again for making Locked On Islanders your first listen every day, every dayers. Tomorrow on the show, we will continue our player by player look at, you know, one big question surrounding each Islander player on the roster. We'll take a look at the goalie, Ilya Sorokin. He's a big key to this team. Let's see what we have to say about him tomorrow. And don't forget, tomorrow, Veterans Report take their physicals. Uh, actually, that's, you know, today. And then tomorrow they head out onto the ice. So, oh, so much to talk about uh, as training camp officially is underway. And I am excited to see what this Islander team can do. Until then, have a great day, everybody. Stay safe. And of course, let's go Islanders.